Hello, Marty here. Welcome to Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Today I'm going to be doing a makeover on this Matchbox number 20B. It's called a 686 truck. It's got ERF on the front, which stands for Edward Richard Foden, who was an Englishman that founded a truck manufacturing company in 1933. So that's the history behind this truck. This is an eight wheeler. And it usually comes out with some EverReady battery decals on the side. But this one here has a pretty shabby paint job, no decals. It's got a wheel missing and it's got rusty axles. So let's have a closer look at it. This actual model came out in 1959. And as you can see, it's got the crimped axle ends on it. Having a look on the underside, it looks like somebody's painted this with some metallic blue color paint at the back there. That may even be a couple of initials. I didn't notice that before. The axles are really rusty and I think they've swollen up and I don't think the tires are going to be very easy to get off. So first up I'm going to mix some paint to try and match the original color. It's a dark blue so to do this I'm using two different paints a black and a blue. I'm going to blend them together, add some thinners and then respray this truck. So just setting myself up there. I'm going to clean some of the original paint off first with some thinners and a little cotton bud there to expose the actual color of the paint because there's a lot of dirt on this, a little dust mainly. Look at that. Did you see how black that cotton bud was? So that's the original colour there. First up I thought this X4 blue from Tamiya was a really good match. And I thought I'd luck it in and not have to actually make up any paint. So I just start off with a little dollop of that and see how close it is to the original. using another cotton bud here or a q-tip some people call them you can see that blue is a little bit too bright the original matchbox was a rather duller darker blue so this calls for some black Tamiya paint I think it's X1 gloss black I start off adding just a couple of drops because it's a strong color but so is the blue and when I mix it up I really don't see much difference so I actually add a little bit more black than I normally would when I'm trying to tint a colour. What was that, about five drops there? Give it a stir. It doesn't look that much different. In fact, even when I put it on the truck, it doesn't look that much different. It's all to do with the lighting and the camera. Please believe me when I say it is slightly darker, maybe two shades. And I'm just going to put a little dollop on the roof there just as another sort of a check so it's on the bare metal and you can see it's actually quite a good match it blends in quite well with the original paint on top of the cab there so I'm happy with that I'll just thin it down a little bit so it goes through the spray gun a little bit easier give it a whip up and snap this lid on these are little salad dressing containers I guess you could use them for they've got a, a sealable lid on the top so they're really handy for keeping your freshly mixed paints in until you're ready to use them. Now looking at these rusty axles I've decided I'm not going to try and reuse them. They are really really bad and you can see the axles because of the rust seem to have expanded and have cracked every tire on this model. So ever optimistic I thought I'll get them off and clean them and see whether or not they are worth saving or if indeed I can even fill the cracks with some filler perhaps and reuse them. So just with some side cutters there I just chomp off the axles and remove these wheels from the model. Now I've got to remove the wheels and tires from the axle which is quite a challenge. Gripping the axle with the pliers and trying to rotate the wheel by thumb and finger pressure 
absolutely impossible. These are seized on here and are going to be very difficult to remove. I've had this problem before. Now, as in the past, I'm going to soak them in some WD-40. As you can see on the can, it says it loosens rusted parts. So that's my go-to product when I'm doing this kind of thing. I'm, some people don't agree with it. They come up with all sorts of ideas, Coca-Cola, lemon juice, etc. But I find this to be quite good in most instances. So I'll just let that soak and hopefully free up those axles. Now looking at the base here, I've decided I'm not going to remove it. Instead, I'm going to repaint it by hand after I've painted the model blue. That way I don't have to drill out the rivet. The reason being is the bed of the truck is very shallow and I don't think that there would be enough rivet left to thread to put in a button headed screw um, as is the norm. If you watch my channel at all, you'll see I do that quite often, but not this one uh, because I don't think it would work with this truck. I'm running out of paint stripper, so I'm being a little bit frugal with it these days. Instead of tipping it all over the model, I'm painting the paint stripper from the can onto the model. That way I'm using less. Because of the COVID-19 restrictions, we can't go out to hardware shops anymore. And to order online takes months, literally. So I'm pretty much handicapped at the moment and have to use what I've got and try and make it last. After the paint has been removed, I turn my attention back to these wheels. Now I have my axle separation system that I've used in the past. It's basically a block with a hole drilled in it and a washer and a little rubber washer there to protect the wheel. Now I have used it for regular wheels. These ones are a little bit undersized and I'm not sure that my AWS is suited for these tires of this diameter. And sure enough, I struggle and get nowhere trying to remove them. So I use another old tried and tested method, which is to knock the axle through the center of a small nut using a small hammer. So as you can see, the axle has gone down through the nut and has forced the tire part of the way up the axle which has freed it up so I can remove it with finger pressure. So that seemed to work okay. So I do that for all seven. Remember this is an eight wheeled truck, but one of them was missing. So I've taken them all off and I'm giving them another close up inspection can't decide if these are plastic or metal. It's quite difficult to work out. Looking closely, they're quite badly cracked. And I think if I look hard enough, I've got some spares. Now, one way to test to see if they're metal or plastic is by biting down on them with your teeth. These are definitely plastic, which is good. Good. So looking at this at magnification, I can't believe I put that in my mouth and I wished I hadn't. Anyway, I've decided to try and find those new tires and wheels that I've got of the same dimensions. I've got a few here, big, small, even smaller. So I compare it with one of the originals. And the original is even smaller still. And I'm sure I ordered some for this model. And it took me a little while to find. But eventually I came across this little Ziploc bag and what do you know, there's eight perfect plastic little wheels in there, ready to be put on this truck. And they are exactly the same size, which is great. I've got to clean them up a little bit because there's a bit of sprue or flashing on there. Then I'm going to use these rivets to make replacement axles. These are the smaller type of rivets you can get. Took me a while to find these, I had to order them online because they're very, very small, thin. They're not commonly available from general purpose stores. Um, to my mind, anyway, I haven't been able to find them other than online, but they are perfect for these little models. 
This is going to look great and I can't wait. I'll just show you, they have a collar on them because they're actually blind or pop rivets. And you just knock that collar off and throw it away. And you're left with the shaft of the rivet there. And it has a perfectly formed end that looks like an original matchbox axle end. And if you recall, this model had flattened ends on the other on the other I've got to stop saying the word end. One end of the axle was mushroomed and the other one was squashed flat. So that's what I'm going to be doing with these homemade axles. Now I've got to get this model into the paint booth. So I just give it a bit of a rough up with this small rotary brush. And I realize that because I'm not taking the base off, I've got to clean the cabin out of the loosened paint because some of the paint stripper got in there. So I'm using these dental picks just to get off any remaining bits of paint. There's quite a fair bit inside the cabin, as you can see, behind my hands on the cardboard. But I got it all off. So now it's time to give it a quick undercoat of the Tamiya fine grey or fine surface primer that's grey. This goes on really, really well. Doesn't obscure any defects or details in the casting. And it's a great thing. Don't know what I'm going to do when I run out. I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. And as usual, I put the model in there on those magnetic clips to air dry. After it's dry, I do like looking at the model close up because the undercoat really enhances all the details on these things. See on the left hand side there, there looks like a large fuel tank. There's an earth grill on the front. See, I guess this truck could be an earth mover because it's got earth written on it. It's got the headlights. And on this side, a battery box or maybe a toolbox. I'm sure someone will know. On the base, you can see it says Earth 68G. Oh, I thought it said 686. I must change the title description. Now, because I'm spraying this and I'm not taking the base off, I have to paint inside the cabin with a brush. I decided to do this because if you try and get up close with the airbrush, I've tried before, you can get overspray on the exterior of the cabin and it can be pretty heavy at close range and can result in runs or blobs of excess paint. So I'm guessing you won't be able to see inside the cabin particularly well with the naked eye. So I'm just using a brush there to coat the interior with the blue paint before I spray paint the model. Whilst that's drying and set aside, I was just remove some of those excess little lumps there off the side of the tires where they've come out of the casting mold plastic mold and just a craft knife and a little sand with some emery paper and somebody's happy these light gray plastic wheels are the wrong color the originals were a lot darker now i have done these types of models before and i have some pre-prepared thinned dark gray paint or medium grey paint with which to paint the wheels so they look like the originals. Can't remember what colours I used to mix this up. It was just a, a dark grey and some white I think. I mixed them up and these are going to look just like the originals. So that's all eight done. Set them aside to dry on the bench. Now I noticed a small imperfection on the front of this model. Kind of a little dent in it. I've been hit with a ball pane hammer. So I'm going to put in the tiniest little amount of filler there. I thought it would look really ugly, the finished product, if it had that hole in it at the front. And someone would comment and say, you missed that. Why didn't you do that? So that's why I did it. So for all you people out there going the extra yard here today, give the model two coats of blue paint. Goes on quite glossy. I like that. And I put that in my little oven to bake that paint on. I only leave it in there for 15 minutes. And when it comes out and is cooled to room temperature, you can handle it. And the beauty of it is you don't leave any fingerprints on it because the paint has been hardened. So it's really handy now because I can handle this model to put the wheels back on. 
The axles are quite tricky. You have to trim them very close to the, to the wheel and just leave a small protrusion on the end. And then I'm using these vice grips or mole grips, some people call them. And I've ground the ends flat so they're not ribbed. And they're extremely tight to squeeze shut. You can see my hands shaking there trying to get these to lock. Once they lock, they squeeze the end of the axle and flatten it out like that. And that stops the wheel from falling off. And looks very similar to the original type of axle that they did on these older models. I finished the end off with my sanding disc in my Dremel and just grind them to shape and hit them with a small file being very careful not to file away at the model. And when they're on there's really only two other things to do now. That's paint the details on the front using a silver ink pen which I dispense on the top of a shot glass there or on the base of a shot glass. I do love this ink, it's very sort of dull silver, very like the original colour silver paint that Matchbox used on its models. And it's very free flowing and it's great for small details. It's very very easy to paint on with a small fine brush. I've always got good coverage. Now these are some decals, I ordered these the same time I ordered the wheels. I must admit it was probably about three or four months ago when I was preparing for this model. Now, it says they're ever ready life and in the middle in white it says four. You won't really see it until it's on the truck. And you'll see the FOR in the middle there contrasted against the dark blue side of the vehicle. As usual I trim these to size, put them in some lukewarm water. It doesn't take long. I think I got these from recovertoy.com, an Australian company. And they're actually quite good, these decals, I must admit. Unfortunately, I can't reproduce these decals myself because I'm unable to print white. I know I can print a blue background on the transfer, but I've tried that before. And you can never really get it to match the actual paint colour. So that's why I opted to buy these, because they have white writing on them. So once the decal has loosened from the backing sheet, I just hold it in place with my forefinger and pull the backing sheet away from underneath the decal using some small tweezers. Then using a wet soft paintbrush, I can manoeuvre the decal exactly where I want it in the middle there. And then remove the excess moisture and roll over it with a cotton bud to get any air bubbles out or excess moisture from underneath. Right, I just heard a truck pull up. Oh, it's Kevin. He's got a new job delivering batteries and he's got a new line in recycled ones that he's, uh, he's recycled and recharged. Hello, Kevin. Oh, what's this? Are these your, are these for me? Oh, they are, thank you very much, yes. These are your recycled ones, are they, that you've made? Oh, no, there's a free sample. I might try them out in my carousel. This is great. This thing's been turning really slowly recently. So I'll put one of these new batteries in. It actually says on there that they are recycled and they have twice the normal power. So I'm not too sure what Kevin's doing, but uh, he may have hit the nail on the head here because if he can recycle these little AA batteries, he can make millions from this. Such a clever bear. Alright, here's a reminder of what we started with. It's not the type of thing that you'd want on your study table, as it looks very tatty. It's uh, in very poor condition. So it was worthy of a makeover. This is what it looks like now with the new decals, the new paint job, the new replacement tyres, the new axles. <laughs> What's not new on this model? Oh, that's right, the base and the the actual cab and the tray, they're all original, everything else is new. But how good does it look? It looks like it's straight out of the box on Christmas Day in 1959. Oh, hang on, the turntable stopped. What's going on? It's smoking. Um, oh! 
Oh my. The battery's exploded. The damn battery's. Kevin! Get. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Here's some close up pictures of the finished model before it got destroyed by Kevin's battery fire. It did look quite good. Oh well, I'll just have to do another one. Whilst I was doing this model, however, remember this was the 20B? Well, I also did another one, the 20A. It's a red state truck. And this came out in 1956, so this is even earlier than the blue one. But they do look fine, they're both earth movers. Both say earth on the front. And they complement each other very well. I do love these old Matchbox models. Simple colours for simple times. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe and recommend to your friends. And until next time, this is Marty saying goodbye.